Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to investigate the action, origin, insertion, and innervation for muscles of the upper extremity. Now, the first group of muscles that we're going to investigate are the pectoral muscles. And as you may already know, the term pectoral refers to the chest. And the two pectoral muscles are the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor. For the pectoralis major, its primary actions include shoulder adduction and internal rotation. In addition to those actions, it performs depression of the shoulder girdle. And in terms of its origin, we find it on the medial portion of the clavicle, the manubrium, the sternum, and ribs two through six. And its insertion is on the intertubercular groove of the humerus, which we commonly call or refer to as the bicipital groove. And this insertion point is shown on the screen here. And lastly, its innervation is the medial and lateral pectoral nerves. The next muscle within our group of pectoral muscles is the pectoralis minor, and its primary actions include shoulder girdle protraction and downward rotation. The muscle originates on ribs 3 through 5, and we'll show those origin points here. And its insertion is at the coracoid process. And lastly, its innervation is both the medial and lateral pectoral nerves. The diaphragm acts primarily to expand the thoracic cavity, which allows for inspiration or the act of breathing in to occur. And this muscle originates on several landmarks. Specifically, it originates on the xiphoid process, the cartilage of ribs 7 through 12, and on the L1 through L3 lumbar vertebrae. The insertion point of the diaphragm is the central tendon, which is an aponeurosis or a broad, thin sheath of connective tissue. I'll place a marker here for now to show its location, and we'll expand on it further in just a moment. And lastly, the nerve that innervates this muscle is the phrenic and intercostal nerves. So here's a better image and indication of where we find the central tendon, which is located on the undersurface of the diaphragm. Now let's take a look at the sternocleidomastoid. Its actions include flexion, lateral flexion, and rotation of the neck and its origin is on both the manubrium and the medial portion of the clavicle. Its insertion is on both the mastoid process and the occipital bone, and we'll show the insertion on the mastoid process here, and the insertion point on the occipital bone here, which is best identified on the posterior aspect of the skull. And last but certainly not least, the innervation of the sternocleidomastoid is the accessory nerve. Moving along, we now have the trapezius, and as we'll see in just a moment, there is a large variety of actions produced by this muscle, which includes shoulder girdle elevation, depression, retraction, and upward rotation. In addition to this, it performs cervical lateral flexion and cervical extension. The muscle originates from the external occipital protuberance and from the C7 spinous process to the T12 spinous processes. And its insertion is on the posterior aspect of the clavicle, acromion, and on the spine of the scapula. And lastly, the trapezius is innervated by the accessory nerve. Next is the serratus anterior, and its actions include shoulder girdle protraction and upward rotation. It originates on ribs 1 through 9, and we'll show those insertion points here. And its insertion is on the medial border of the scapula, and we'll show that insertion point here. And lastly, its innervation is the long thoracic nerve. Next, let's take a look at the levator scapulae. Its actions include shoulder girdle elevation and downward rotation, along with both cervical extension and cervical lateral flexion. Its origin is located from the C1 to the C4 vertebrae, specifically at the transverse processes. 
and its insertion is on the superior angle of the scapula. And lastly, its innervation is the dorsal scapular nerve. Now, let's explore a final group of muscles referred to as the rhomboids. And for this group of muscles, we have the rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor. First up is the rhomboid major. Its actions include shoulder girdle retraction and shoulder girdle downward rotation. Its origin is on the spinous processes of T2 through T5, and we'll show those origin points here. Its insertion is on the medial border of the scapula, just underneath the spine of the scapula, and we'll show that insertion point here. And lastly, its innervation is the dorsal scapular nerve. And lastly, on our list of muscles is the rhomboid minor. Its actions include shoulder girdle retraction and shoulder girdle downward rotation. It originates on the spinous processes of the C7 and T1 vertebrae, and we'll show those origin points here. And its insertion is on the medial border of the scapula. And last but not least, its innervation is the dorsal scapular nerve. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful, and I'll look forward to connecting with you in the next one.